we have a pretty open door policy. If you're, uh, you know, if you want to come by and visit at, uh, at Impact Wrestling, now TNA Wrestling, you're more than welcome. There's one simple rule. Don't be an a-hole. Mm-hmm. Be respectful and you'll be respected. <laughs> um, and you know what? Uh, Punk, when he showed up earlier this year, was, uh, was a pleasure to have in the locker room when he asked if he could come, uh, you know, the day after Bound for Glory, come by the TV, say hello, watch some of the show. We said, of course. Hello and welcome to a very special interview recorded at Park Plaza Westminster Bridge in London. On behalf of Sports Keeda, I'm your host today, GB. Today's guest is former coach of one of my personal favourite stables, Team Canada. Yes, had to squeeze that in. Please welcome the current president of Impact Wrestling, Scott Demore. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for uh, taking the time today. No worries. Thank you for uh, allowing me to interview you today. I do want to congratulate you, by the way, on a successful UK tour. The first time that Impact uh, Forward Slash TNA has been in the UK for, what, nearly a decade now. And I was lucky enough to be part of it to see Leon Slayer getting signed. Awesome match, by the way. My voice isn't 100%, but it was totally worth it. But I'd like to know, um, how do you feel about Impact's first UK tour overall? I mean, I think returning returning here was a uh, was a great experience, and uh, you know, the uh, the UK market plays such an important role in TNA wrestling's history. Mm-hmm. And when you look at it, you look at the fact that I in two thousand and eight when we first came over here, it was one of the landmark moments for this company because um, it, it's just one of those times like when we got here, our first ever event was in Liverpool at the Olympia, and I was like, all these people are here. <laughs> And then like fans waiting outside the venue and at the hotels, like for the first, it was like, we're, we're rock stars. Like when you talk about like landmark moments, it was like moving from the asylum to Universal Studios. Yeah. You know, it was, that was a big moment. It was debuting on Spike TV. It was the first pay-per-view on the road when we went to like a place near and dear to my heart, Detroit, Michigan for Bound for Glory in 06. And in 08 coming to the UK, it was like, like we've made it. Like we're, we're touring. It's the first time we ever really toured and to see the way the fans came out and how loud they were and the fact that it was like, truthfully, like I said, we all felt like we were rock stars when we came mm. over here. And uh, to be able to return here in uh, in 2023, and to me, it's really special. We made that announcement at Bound for Glory. And then I just think it's perfect that the next events after Bound for Glory weekend are here in the UK, which has been such a, an important market. Like I said, that tour was so important. Mm-hmm. The relationship with Challenge TV and, you know, British boot camp and, mm. and 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 that was so important. The, the, the January tour, the annual tour here was so important to the company. So I just think the UK market is is, is so important to, to Impact Wrestling. And we, we had a tour planned out here for 2020 and then we all know what happened to the world in 2020. Yep, well, so got down full time. <laughs> so it, it took us a little while to get back here, but now that uh, now that we're back, you're not getting mm. rid of us. No, well, obviously, we're so glad to have you back. I was there, like I said, it was a fantastic show. The fans in general, well received. Just, just go on Twitter and you see the reception that you received. Harley Hudson also getting signed from the TNA cut check. Now, pe- people also forget there was a time when people were watching TNA more than WWE. Right. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like ah, it's funny, I said it earlier today that I think in some ways, I mean, even though, look, I mean, WWE is always WWE. It's, <laughs> it's the 400, 500 pound gorilla, right? Um, but I, I, I always kind of felt like a little bit that the, that the fans here in the year, UK felt a lot more like TNA wrestling was their company. Yeah. And I think it was, you know, w, and is. W, WWE is a, is a giant company, goes all over the world, but it's an American company. Yeah. And I think when you look at, you know, TNA wrestling, whether it was Doug Williams joining us on that first tour or whether it was Nick Aldis and, you know, the world elite and everything else. I mean, I, I think, you know, Nigel McGuinness, I mean, I think that, that you, the UK market, UK talent, you know, the UK broadcast deals have always meant so much to this company. And and for me personally, like the, the UK has been such a big part of my career. When I when I had immigration woes and couldn't wrestle in the US anymore and, and didn't know what I was gonna do in 1996, I came over here and did the holiday games. Wow, didn't I know You that. know, and it, it kept me going and then getting to not just keep going, but to do mm. 10 shows a week, two, you know, we're doing two shows a day, five shows, you know, five days a week. And I was wrestling twice, twice a show. So um, there was, there, I was doing 20 matches a week. So I mean, you learn a lot doing 20 matches a week. And yeah. then I don't ever end up here at TNA wrestling if it's not for the World Wrestling All-Stars. 
And the and you know back in 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 late uh, 2002, I got the opportunity to be the tour manager for World Wrestling All Stars, and, uh, and and getting to to do that, that's really where I got to know Jeff Jarrett, and what led to me joining TNA. And even like my my last UK match was on that World Wrestling All Stars tour, and, and we were in Newcastle, and we were so short-handed that yeah. I had to dust off the boots for one night, and, <laughs> and getting to go back to Newcastle here this week, and. And having one of the security guys say that was the first ever show that he saw is just like it's just holds a special place in my heart. And I think when you talk about wrestling in the worldwide markets, it's mm -hmm. the U.S., it's Mexico, and it's the U.K. Yeah. Those are the major markets for for wrestling. And having been here in 1996, respectfully, when the U.K. scene was not at its height, <laughs> to see what it is now, yeah. both talent-wise, which is unbelievable. And you know the 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 shows that are going on like that like Rev Pro earlier this year. How many thousands of people did they have yeah. here back in August? Right, like, quite attendance. And to see that, I mean, it's just a, you're like okay, like you know, I remember watching the last episode of World of Sport, and and almost like among the most depressing things you could ever watch is they basically announced that you're never going to see British wrestling again on television, and, yeah. and to see that all these years later, such a bustling scene. I just think it's. Uh, it's great to see, and it's a, it's a, it's a testament to what pro wrestling is when it's done right. Hundred percent. Like as a fellow you know, UK fan, we are grateful when we see good wrestling, and that's what we saw uh, last weekend. And I think all the fans are said they uh, we enjoyed it. Is there any plans, by the way? Can you confirm that you'll be coming back next year? I'm telling you now that we're back. There's no way you're getting rid of us. Yes. So <laughs> no, I mean. Um, excited to to be back here and excited mm. to look at 2024 and what we can do here in the uk and uh you know the way that the fans embraced us here this past week and uh, you know i was a little worried to be honest as like it's kind of awkward right like we you know we announced we do the tna announcement but then okay but we're still impact wrestling yeah. to the end of the year i don't think that mattered to any of those fans in attendance like the crowd chanted tna all night long um it, it was awesome to hear I, I just think i know our whole roster that's you know probably still on planes heading home uh to them it was just like it was such a it was such a great time to to be over here there, there's something about riding the buses together and you know all all yeah. being together and, and spending that time and and with the audience just, there's just not a more passionate loud you know robust fan base than than, than the uk like it's just the loud crowds just cheering chanting singing the chants and, and singing yeah, yeah. And it, makes, it makes for a great you know so it, it's uh it, it's awesome to be back here and we'll definitely yeah. be back here in 2024. awesome i'm looking forward to it bound for glory um signified at the end of an era in more ways than one with the return of tna wrestling it blew up the internet so Looking back, was this the perfect uh, bookend to that era of Impact Wrestling? I mean, I, I think so in some ways. I mean, it's uh, we've spent six long years um, w w since I've been back, mm -hmm. you know, great years, but long years, like really working hard to 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 build this company back. I mean, the company that I left, the TNA Wrestling that I left years ago was a really strong, great company. Yeah. And when I when I came back here, it was it, I mean, it was respectfully just a, a different company in a different place. And it uh, to see how much of its luster it had lost, and to to sit in this very same room here and have to you know basically like like hear questions about like is this the end? Yeah. You know, TNA Impact Wrestling, and and have all this talk and everything else, and, and and you know we sat here and talked about how we were going to earn fans' trust back, and I think we've done that. I mm. think we've, you know, we've proven that when we promise something, we deliver it. And if you, if you show some faith in us, and if you invest in us, either with your money or just as importantly with your time, then then you're going to be rewarded for that. So I, mm. I, I think that it's, uh, you know, it's been a great six years, and I now think that this group we have together that is that is really special, is deserving and ready to carry those three initials that I put great weight to. Yeah. I don't. I think TNA wrestling is. Uh, it's something that's that, that's that's near to my heart and very important to me. And I think we've seen in the past couple of weeks that it's something that's very important yeah. and beloved by the fans. And uh, as I explained, to, you know, as I chatted with Jeff Jarrett the other day on the flight over here, like, you know, like, like, hey, you know, this is your creation. And I just want you to know, like, it's going to get our 100. Yeah. You know, we're going to we're going to, you know, put everything into this. I wouldn't I wouldn't let TNA go back up on the door if I didn't believe in what we're doing. Mm. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited for it. I, truthfully, I think six years ago, if we sat here and if we would have said, "Hey, we're going to be TNA wrestling," they would have went, uh, "Okay, yeah. whatever." 
you know, because the faith wasn't there. Now I think we've earned mm -hmm. that trust. I think now people are really excited. Bound for Glory when that video played and Josh Alexander, you know, you know, leaned over and he unclasped the, yeah. the you know, that chest and you know, you heard that whisper of that name, that building exploded. Saw um, a reaction. Yeah. Even you, right, you know, if the F bomb, right. <laughs> yeah, I gotta find myself for that one. So, yeah, no, it, I mean it was great and it was special. And uh, I mean, that's why we, we went back and forth on do we show that locker room footage that we ultimately ended up showing. But we wanted people to see how important it was to, to not just the fans, but that all of us were in this together. The locker room, the crew, the staff, the fans, we're all excited and we're going on this mm. journey together. And the journey is just, just going to get better. And I'm looking forward to next year as well. With the um, Impact logo, by the way, will that be going back to the classic Reds, Crack logo, or do you have new designs that are going to be uh, you know, getting produced? You're talking about for uh, impact. impact, yeah, yeah. I, 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 the crack, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think we put out a logo. I think, didn't we? I think, I, I think we put out a, I've a seen, TNA impact logo. Yeah. it's not crack, but it's very. It's quite it, similar. A little it's bit. very true to the yeah. original design. We wanted. We wanted to be true to the original design, but we wanted to update it, modernize it a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, and I think it's the perfect situation. Our company can now proudly be TNA Wrestling. That's what hangs on the door. And our weekly flagship television show is Impact. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have to be Impact Wrestling Impact anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we finally, we finally <laughs> fixed that issue. It's TNA Wrestling, yeah. you know, Impact. Awesome. Is this the logo we put out? That's what? Yeah. Yeah, no, so, yeah, yeah. saw that one. I just thought maybe like might go back to the original one or so. Just I thought that was just there in for the time be uh, time period. No, then... I think we'll stick with it. Like yeah. we went back and forth. I, I mean, I think the, the crack was a little bit dated. Maybe is, yeah. the, is the feedback. I mean, I, I'm slow to change. I'm a late adapter. Yeah. So uh, to, to <laughs> me, nothing would ever change. Like I'm the person. If this bottle sits here and I come in and it's here, it's almost like why isn't it there? Like that's where it belongs. You know. Um, so I'm I'm slow to change, but. Uh, but no, I'm I'm excited uh, to uh, to have mm. the the name back. I'm I'm glad that we stayed with 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 classic, uh, you know, look to <laughs> the to the logos. But the logo itself, like the TNA logo, is iconic. Yeah, and 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 to me, we stayed very close to it. It was important that we yeah. stayed very close to it. You know, you don't want it to be the exact same because mm -hmm. you need to evolve a bit. But I think it's important that that it you know we we truly. You know, are, are, are back, and uh, you know that that logo to me, I mean, you know, brings goosebumps. Yeah. Just made me so, smile, honestly, seeing that announcement, seeing yeah. the logo, and obviously just like TNA, TNA, you know. Yeah. Just... I'm just gonna say one thing. There was a guy with an old school belt, loose had the TNA belt. It's amazing. But I heard you might. I'm gonna give him a question. You might be changing it, right? Or you want to keep when you bring the belts back? Oh, right, the belt design stuff. Yeah, I mean we we've got we've got new belts uh, nice. all designed yeah. and, and ready to debut. So, um, you know, look, I mean, I, I think I love that design yeah. too. Yeah. But I think part of things are we, we should always be moving forward a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not saying we won't we won't ever go back like we brought that title back, you mm -hmm. know, a couple of years ago that design. But I think I think it's important that while we stay true to what we are, we continue to evolve. So, yeah. and I'm excited. I, I mean, I'm hopeful that fans when they see it will go. Those belts, you know, have a cool look to them. They feel TNA, but they're still, they're a new design. Mm. No, I'm looking forward to seeing the new sign. Uh, PCO was the first official sign-in yeah. um, of the new era of TNA wrestling. Mm -hmm. We just confirmed about um, Leon Slater and Harley Hudson yesterday. Uh, congratulations to her. Is there any other household names that you'd like to personally see back under the world-renowned moniker of TNA? I mean, look, I mean, I think we have a pretty open door policy. I, I yeah. love the fact that our first signing is PCO and our second signing is Leon Slater. I don't yeah. know if two signings get any different. <laughs> um, so, so uh, but I think both are great, right? I mean, you've got a, you've got a, a success story in PCO of a guy who, you know, I think many people wrote off as his career over, mm. his career being over, and he went there and reinvented himself. Yeah. Um, you know, he's not... Uh, He's not. Uh, he's not human. He, he's, he's, not, he's not a Quebecer. Not just a monocle, but yeah, no, he's he's not human. Uh, you know, and it's it's great to have him. And I think you know he's in, in many ways like he's uh, he's like our abyss mm. in this era, right? Like he's our crazy hardcore guy who can go out there and do anything and seems to defy what a human being should be able to do. Hence, why like, he's not human. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I think that's great. And then I think Leon Slater is exactly what uh tna was built on which is giving opportunity to young super talented mm. people 
So 19 years old, wise, and, you know, a little mature beyond his his years and uh, and as good a prospect as I think you'll see anywhere in the industry. So excited to have Leon with us. No, it's great. It's great to be there in attendance as well. Um, favorite impact vesting moment from the era that we're now moving from, but just moments that kind of um, said that to you, like even my proudest moment to you personally. You're talking about at- Impact oh, vesting. Oh, impact vesting. For the last like five, six years. Wow. Kind of put your spot a little bit there, but. Um, boy. Obviously, slam anniversary earlier this year yeah. it was special to me. Um, you know, in Canada, like on your mom, then just yeah, getting getting wrestling in my hometown. Like mm. I, I I didn't realize it till Tom Hannafin said it. He walked up to me and said, "When's your last? When was your last match?" And I go, "My last, my last like match at all?" Or like I said, because I probably wrestled Gallows somewhere behind a used tire place shortly before he signed. Um, you know, back with WWE, I go, but my last match of like any like substance or like mm. on a national base, I go, I'm not sure. And he came to me a little while later as he's just about to go to the ring. He goes, uh, 2008 Tokyo, Japan for All Japan Pro Wrestling at Sumo Arena. And I go, what? He goes, that was the last uh, time that you had a match on a national level. Wow. As he walked through the curtain, I went, uh-oh, that was 15 years ago. What, what the <laughs> hell have you been doing? <laughs> Um, so, I mean, that was certainly a special moment. Uh, I think that uh, Moose uh, spearing Josh Alexander, calling his shot and winning the world title there, mm -hmm. right after Josh Alexander, after his long journey to the title oh. with his wife and with his son there in the ring, and being the, guy, that was. being the guy who gets to defeat Christian Cage, who's such an important figure in our company's yeah. history. Um, to have that feel good moment and and then to have Moose come in and cash it in and ruin it all in the best of ways. I just remember going on, on social media a couple of days later and one of the first things I saw was that this was a truly special moment until the ending, you know, F you. And I was like, <laughs> oh, we got him. Um, but you know, but that led to the that led to the uh, to the chase with Josh Alexander yeah. culminating at Rebellion and him the pile for yeah. Definitely. So I mean, I think I think that was a I think that was a really cool moment. Um, another one that maybe probably just for me in some ways, but seeing Kushida, who who's somebody that I met when he was just a, barely more than a teenager, mm -hmm. you know, and moved to Canada for his training, and uh, you know, it told me years ago, like I I my dream is that I become TNA, you know, wrestling star. And to see him main event a, a pay-per-view for the world title, like as a, as, as a coach, mm. you know, that, that really um, was kind of a cool moment um, for me to watch that. I just, uh, you know, I could probably list so many more, so I'll stop. The Canadian Destroyer just like went viral. Is there any more? Can we expect any more of them? Uh, you know, I mean, hey, like, I think, uh, like, it was certainly fun. I was petrified. So. <laughs> you know, it's just so funny because I, I refused to do the Canadian Destroyer on TV for so long. I almost got fired over it back in the day. Oh, wow. You know, they wanted me to, to Canadian Destroyer AJ Styles on TV, and I was like, not a chance. <laughs> there is no way that the fat, you know, like, dopey manager is hitting the coolest move in wrestling. Yeah. You know, back, back then, back in 2004, like 2005, like the Canadian Destroyer was magical. Mm -hmm. You know, PD was the only guy doing it, and people almost didn't know how it how it was done. Like Will Osprey told me the other day that him and his friends would sit there and watch it back over and over again, trying to figure out how it was done. You know, and to me, you would have ruined that moment back then if if, if Coach Demore had done the the Canadian Destroyer, right? You know, now fast forward to 2023 when everybody under the sun has done the Canadian Destroyer. Yeah. Probably, probably isn't going to be bastardized anymore by me doing it. So to hell with everybody else. I'll, I'll do it. But I was still a little nervous, you know. Um, but it was fun. But yeah. yeah. I, I mean, truthfully, I think, like I said, the stuff with, 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 with Moose and, and, and Josh was really special. Some of the stuff with Josh and Christian Cage was really special for me. I mean, Christian just being, you know, somebody I've known since we really broke into the business together. And having him come back to be TNA champion uh, all these years later, I think was, was, was super cool. And the fact that he worked so hard as part of, you know, doing that handoff to, uh, to Josh Alexander, um, I think was special. Yeah. You know, in a bound for glory. I mean, the, the, the TNA thing, is obviously like the biggest news coming out of it, but you know, very close to my heart too, is getting a chance to go out there and honor Mike Tanay and Don West. 
Yeah. Um, they're, they're, as Will Ospreay said, uh, when I got to introduce them, he like kind of half blurted out, you're the voice of my childhood. <laughs> you know? And I mean, it was so cool to see like the biggest star in wrestling, the hottest free agent, yeah. or soon to be free agent that there is. And to see the wonderment as he gets to meet Mike today, because Mike today, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically when he left TNA wrestling, he just disappeared. Yeah. You know, and he's, he hasn't done appearances. He hasn't done, you know, fan fests or anything else like that. His speech was really good. Oh, I mean, really he's good. Mike today. Like, he's the professor. Yeah. So, you know, the shame was is he probably could have done, you know, a whole 30 minutes, mm. you know, himself. He's just, he literally is the voice of a generation, or yeah. really probably generations. Um, so to be able to have him come back and to honor him, and and also of course uh very emotional yeah. to get a chance to, to to honor don west you know i i don't I, it. yeah i don't i don't think you can underestimate how valuable mike and don are and how important they are to the history of this company and you know mike's a professor unrivaled knowledge of professional wrestling the best student in the game there's ever been yeah and then to have dw who came in and you know, like who just like took a different approach before Don West. I don't think there was ever somebody who sat in that chair as a color commentator and was a fan. Yeah. And I think I five, think, five in the best. Of <laughs> yeah, I think it took a little bit for people to kind of get it with him. Yeah. Kind of like, wait. But then I think after a while, I think it kind of resonated like he's one of us. Mm. He's sitting there. He's not a wrestler. He hasn't been around the business for 30 years. He's just one of us. He's a wrestling fan that's just sitting there watching it and reacting along with the rest of us. So, um, you know, obviously losing Don West was a huge loss um, for all of us. More important than him as a professional, he's just an amazing human being and a man. And uh, getting a chance to honor the two of them together was like truly special and emotional to me. Yeah, it made me smile just uh, seeing the, uh, the video package. Yeah. them and then just yeah. i couldn't watch it because i knew if i watched the video package i i wouldn't be able to go out there and yeah and and and, and induct them which i mean i started to watch it then i had to turn and walk away because i could feel my eyes starting to well yeah. up so i was like i can't do this he's chopping up onions in there yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, was, it was a great moment um the acquisition of trinity that actually uh shot the western world again tna making headlines yeah. um i want to know how did that come about given this huge budget that she did create uh, with her announcement yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, truthfully, we just kind of fell into it. There was, you know, kind of like, you know, informal talks and, and, and she was was looking to do something. I think the timing was right. I don't I don't know if it was necessarily, you know, public that she went out and, and had surgery in the time after she left WWE and she, she was healthy again. And and, you know, the you know, the had a conversation and you know like what a what a perfect fit like you know and i mean you know the fact is you, you talk about somebody that that embodies what i think tna wrestling stands for yeah uh one she stood up for what she believes and you know yeah. I, i'm not going to sit here and say that you know that, that the right decision to do is walk out but sometimes you have to stand up for for what's right and yeah. you know what's going to be easy what's the saying if you don't stand up for 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 something then you fall for everything yeah um you know i i think that she you know she felt that uh you know it was important that uh that uh, that she do that and, and when she was on the market i think her coming here and i think it was it was great because we were able to show for anybody who was going to say that she could only exist in that in that machine right like when you're in wwe the great part is you have such a support system Mm -hmm. um, and it's a machine. Um, and she came out and showed that she truly is a star on her own. She doesn't need that machine. Yeah. Um, she came here and she's been a great fit. You know, she uh, she's uh, she's she's just fit in perfectly with the locker room. I think she's a, a great um, a great addition to the to the knockouts roster. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we're we're excited to have her with us, and we hope she's with us for years to come. She looks like really happy, like she's really like having a great time out there. Like even her and Mickey at Bound for Glory, that was a really good match. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, that was a great match, mm. and she's just. Uh, I think she's just getting started. Yeah. I, I think that you can see that she's uh, she's she's growing week after week, month after month, and I don't think we've seen you know the, the best of her yet. That's still to come. No, definitely. Uh, I want to ask about when I spoke because we just spoke about him. He recently uh, teased testing out the waters of uh, free agency next year. So will Impact be making a bid? Uh, do you reckon uh, can be in contention to be the new face of the new era of TNA wrestling? I mean, I think, you know, Will gave his 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 thoughts on, on TNA wrestling. I think he gave some in Chicago there. Mm -hmm. um, 
after uh, after his match with Josh Alexander. Um, he also, for the fans that were there, you know, in, in Newcastle, I think he went into great detail about what TNA wrestling means to him. And I don't know who the winner's going to be. I've been joking. I've been calling it the February 2024 Will Ospreay, you know, sweepstakes. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I mean, are you asking me, would we want Will Ospreay to be the face of TNA nope. wrestling? Of course. Probably a dumb question you know, for me. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's arguably, you know, the, the, the best wrestler on the planet right now. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a great argument to make that he's the best wrestler on the planet right now. And I don't think that there's any disputing that, you know, the, the year that Will Ospreay has had in 2023, I don't think any one wrestler has had a better single year than Will's had in 2023 with everything he's done from you know, Wrestle Kingdom and the Tokyo Dome to 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 Wembley to, to all the great matches to, you know, now in the last couple of weeks, you know, Mike <laughs> Bailey, Josh Alexander and and Eddie Edwards matches. I mean, I think the, the, all three of those matches could be, you know, people are talking about the Bailey though. one being matched the year. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I think that any three of those matches could be could be matched. The year. They were all just so good. But I mean, Will went out there and talked about it. He referred to himself as a TNA kid. You know, he said yeah. that he was flipping channels and it was TNA wrestling that uh, that inspired him to be a wrestler. Um, you know, so to have him say that like, he well, doesn't need to say anything about anybody, right? He's Will freaking Osprey. Yeah. You know, so for him to do that and to, you know how excited he is about TNA returning, and for him to say like, you know, hey, I don't know what happens in you know in February of next year, but I know one thing: I'm going to be in a TNA wrestling ring before that. So that's pretty neat for him to to say so uh we'll get to the table and get that deal done and will we you know be interested in will osprey of course will will we be the eventual winner of that sweepstakes uh, i don't know but uh come on osprey make the right decision <laughs> yeah i mean now look I'll, I'll i'll certainly be in it what's that i was just saying the last question oh yeah. um <laughs> I, I i would certainly uh i would certainly be in the corporate office of uh, anthem sports and entertainment Mm -hmm. saying that we should be putting together the best possible bid we can to have Will come be the face of the brand. Because to me, Will Ospreay is the AJ Styles of his generation. And much like AJ Styles was able to inspire Will Ospreay to become what he's become, I think Will Ospreay can inspire an entire generation to, uh, to, to be the next, you know, generational talent. You know, the next Will Ospreay, the next AJ Styles, the next whoever that is. I mean, going out there and evolving the business and, and just, uh, like I said, changing the industry. I hope he makes the right decision. Uh, I might tweet him later. I'm joking. So, last question I'm going to ask you is about CM Punk, who was actually backstage at Impact Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Again, Impact TNA making headlines, especially at like the end of the year. Just, you don't know what's happening in Impact. I've got to ask what your thoughts on the reaction um, that was received about the news that he was at Bound for Glory. Well, he wasn't actually at Bound for Glory. He was oh, at okay. the Chicago Blackhawks game that night. Oh, right. um, yeah, because he's he's a huge Chicago Blackhawks hockey fan. Yep. And he was appearing at the game, uh, you know, leading the uh, the pregame ritual and appearing on the broadcast. But he was there the next day at our TV, which is not unheard of. He was in Chicago at an event of ours earlier this year. Um, we have a pretty open to a policy. If you uh, you know if you want to come by and visit at, uh, at Impact Wrestling, now TNA Wrestling, you're more than welcome. There's one simple rule, don't be an a-hole. Mm -hmm. Be respectful and you'll be respected. <laughs> um, and you know what? Uh, Punk, when he showed up earlier this year, was uh, was a pleasure to have in the locker room when he asked if he could come, uh, you know, the day after Bound for Glory, come by the TV, say hello, watch some of the show. We said, of course. And he came back and again was a, was a pleasure to have there. He chatted with some of the talent. I got to sit there and watch him and Josh Alexander have a, have a nice long mm -hmm. chat and you know what a, what a great opportunity to have uh somebody like cm punk in there and i mean even if you just have a conversation even if it's not even all about wrestling there's no yeah. way you don't learn um you know something out of a conversation like that so i mean he's you know he's welcome at events of ours again sort of like i said you asked me would, would, would we like will osprey to be the face of the brand sure would yeah. would we be open to to having CM Punk join Impact Wrestling, you know, of course. Like, I mean, why wouldn't we? You look at the business he he drove for WWE and you look at what he did in AEW. He went to the AEW, ticket sales went up, you know, uh, viewers went up, pay-per-view buys went up. Um, you know, again, if it's the right fit and it works for him and it works for us business-wise, and if it's a good fit relationship-wise, the the one thing that uh, that is unwavering is that, you know, like I said, they come into our locker room, you know, it's got to be somebody who's going to come in, fit in, be respectful. Punk has been that anytime that he's came around us. So 
we don't judge based off of you know what you hear we judge off of what you do when you're around us and he's been nothing but a pleasure to be around so is it a possibility never write it off as as being something to happen you know so i get a kick out of all the people and all the stories i read and yeah. they're like oh really like we made an offer oh we did this okay cool like uh, somebody should tell me some of this stuff <laughs> <laughs> So, but I mean, look, we, we remain open to, to, to any possibilities, whether yeah. it's, whether it's joint venturing or doing collaboration agreements with other companies, whether it's talent coming in, whatever it is, uh, if it's good for business, you know, and it, it makes, it makes sense and, uh, and the fans are into it, then we're open. Awesome. Uh, as we say goodbye to Impact Wrestling and welcome back to, you know, wrestling, if you could just quickly summarize the Impact Wrestling era in just a few words, how would you describe? Uh, hard work stability and uh, a reestablishment of trust. Mm -hmm. I think that's what our time under the Impact Wrestling banner was meant to be. And I think that's what we did. And I think it was the perfect table setter uh, for us to return as our true name as TNA Wrestling. Like I said, it, it's always been TNA Wrestling in my heart. Yeah. Uh, and now I feel like like we're, we're ready and uh, the wrestling world's ready for, for TNA to return. And I think that the group that we have assembled is the perfect group to reemerge under that uh, under that name, that iconic three letters, and I'm super proud to have those three letters again be the letters that are on our doors moving yeah. forward in 2024. The roster's so strong at the moment, and I'm looking forward to it. Scott, thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope you've had a good time in the UK, as we spoke before recording. I know, you know you had some highlights, and you're going to be coming back. So thank you uh, for all the fans out there. Thank you for your time, and I hope you all have a great weekend.